Dr. Matt Cablin is a professor of pathology, adjunct professor of genome sciences, and adjunct professor of oral health sciences at the University of Washington. His research interests are focused on basic mechanisms of aging in order to facilitate translational interventions that promote health span and improve quality of life. He is currently leading the Dog Aging Project, a large multi-year trial to study the aging of companion dogs in a normal environment. He has published nearly 200 papers in top scientific journals and has been recognized by several prestigious awards, including a Breakthroughs in Gerontology Award and most recently GSA's 2020 Robert W. Klemeyer Award. Cablin, welcome to Modern Healthspan, and thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Sure, it's a pleasure to be here. So, Dr. Cablin, you run a, um, a lab at Washington University where you're looking at aging is, is one of your major topics. So, so could you talk about how you think about aging and what, um, what, what kind of research you're doing towards it? Sure. Yeah. So just uh, just point of clarification, I'm at the University of Washington and and I only make that point because there is a Washington University in St. Oh, Louis. And so sorry. people get confused. That's OK. Uh, yeah. So I'm at the University of Washington in Seattle, which is a very different place than St. Louis. Um, mm. uh, and you're right. I uh, I study the biology of aging, broadly speaking, um, and I've really been interested in aging since I was a graduate student and and what has um sort of fascinated me about the biology of aging is, is initially this question of what are the conserved mechanisms? And by that, I mean, you know, what are the aspects of aging that are shared if we look across many different animals? Um, and, and sort of my viewpoint on that from the very beginning has been that, that those mechanisms that are the same in say a single celled yeast or a nematode worm or a mouse or a dog, um, are likely to also be the same in people. So, you know, with this interest that what we really want to understand are the mechanisms that are at play in human aging, because we know that the vast majority of diseases and functional declines that afflict humans are age associated. Um, and so really I'm trying to understand those mechanisms, those biological mechanisms um, that are uh, conserved in the aging process across all of these different animals. And so to do that, we study aging in multiple different animals in my lab. We work in single-celled yeast. We work in nematode worms called C. elegans. We also do uh, many experiments in mouse models of aging. And then outside of the laboratory, we study aging in companion dogs or pet dogs, um, uh, with the idea being that, that pet dogs in particular capture an aspect of aging that we can't capture in the laboratory, which is the human environment. Right. And, and so what do you think are the main things that drive or, or that, that, that age depends on or our speed of aging? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, the, the field has made a lot of progress in the past two decades, um, you know, since the time I was a graduate student in really understanding these mechanisms of aging. And so there are a few ways to, to kind of think about this, but I think the one that is probably most popular and it's a nice sort of formalized way of thinking about aging are these hallmarks of aging. And so mm -hmm. these are conserved molecular mechanisms that contribute to the biological aging process. Uh, things like telomere shortening or accumulation of senescent cells or mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, there are nine of them and, and it's probably not important to go through each of them today. I think what's important mm -hmm. is to understand that, that by being able to, to identify these mechanisms of aging, each of them individually are potentially good targets for therapies that, that can help prevent or maybe even reverse some of the functional declines that go along with aging. Um, the other thing that's really, I think, been interesting um, to, to note is that these hallmarks of aging are interconnected in the sense that we know that there are fundamental genetic pathways that seem to regulate several, maybe even all of these hallmarks of aging simultaneously. And so I'm very interested in identifying and understanding those genetic interactions um, at a cellular molecular level, because again, then those pathways become nice targets for interventions that can potentially delay or reverse some of the declines that go along with aging. Right, so that would hopefully provide some kind of systemic, systemic way of 
moving of yeah delaying or reducing aging or maybe even reversing right okay yeah now that would be really good um so i saw that you as, as well as kind of doing a study you also wrote a an article and published it in the hill which was kind of like overview of of aging in general uh, so is that also kind of part of your your work or Somewhat. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely related to my work. I, I um, sort of view one of one of the roles that I can play is as a, a communicator of the science of aging to the general public. And so that article that I wrote in The Hill, you know, was particularly um, attempting to make the point that COVID-19, which is something that is sort of, you know, um, uh, engaged the entire world for obvious reasons um, is very much a disease of aging. And what I mean by that is that, that um, an individual's risk of severe outcome or, or hospitalization or even death from COVID-19 looks very much like the same risk profile that you see as a function of age for Alzheimer's disease or heart mm -hmm. disease or most cancers. And so that there's this, this biology of aging that is um, impacting the outcomes of people who get COVID-19. And the vast majority of people who have died from COVID-19 are elderly. And that, that this is um, an important thing to consider as we're grappling with potential ways to um, treat COVID-19, prevent COVID-19 deaths, that um, if we don't think about the relationship between the biology of aging and these severe outcomes, that's gonna limit our ability to actually have an impact on this disease. And vaccines are a really good example of this, right? So there's a lot of, I think, you know, appropriate excitement about the fact that there are now a couple of vaccines that are becoming available for COVID-19. That's fantastic. But I think it's also important to consider that those vaccines are probably not gonna work very well in the very people who are most at risk of dying from COVID-19, the elderly, just like the flu vaccine doesn't work as well in the elderly. We, um, as, a, as an international society, you know, tolerate the fact that something like half a million people a year are going to die from influenza every year. We've got this global pandemic, which obviously is, you know, captured everybody's attention this year, but even before COVID-19, we had, you know, a lot of, a lot of people dying from influenza, and again, that's mostly among the elderly, and that's because their aged immune system is not functioning the way that it did when they were young. So trying to help the general public understand that there is this biology of aging that's important and is modifiable now. That's something that has changed, I think, in the last 20 years. We've gone from this hypothetical, yeah, maybe we can have an impact on biological aging to, okay, we understand enough. We don't understand it all for sure, but we understand enough that we can actually have an impact on biological aging and potentially um, greatly influence human health and longevity. Right. Do you find um, any more it, that that message is better received? now? Are you finding that people kind of understand it? Um, I think so. I, I, I would say it's, it's better received. I think, I think it's still, um, it's a slow, it's been a slow change. So um, both within the general public and within uh, policymakers uh, uh, and, and people who are um, on the regulatory side, like at, at FDA, I think we're really still at the beginning of this, this change in that sort of understanding that 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 there is a biology of aging that we un, that, that we have a scientific um, understanding of at least aspects of the biology of aging, and that we now have interventions that seem to target those mechanisms. That that um, we're still in the early days, I think, of that message, you know, really being received and and understood, you know, by 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 many constituents, including the general public, policymakers. Uh, uh, potential funders and regulatory agencies. So it's happening, but it's happening slowly. Mm. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.